Welcome back to What Arty Nibs with Channel Disturbance. This is a GW Panther, the G Geschutz Wagen Panther. It's the tier 7 German SPG and we're on the south east spawn of fjords and it's under the command of Guji 72. Now I can see one mark of excellence on the barrel and I suspect that he's going to have a bit of fun in this game. Normally when you have one mark on the barrel you can actually do oh, some shit. unusual things. Well, this is a turreted SPG, and he hasn't moved away from his spawn point yet. Now he is. Just trying to make up his mind which way he's going to go. And it looks to me like he's going to head off into what I used to call Little Yugoslavia, which is the area alongside the peninsula, which looks like Italy. Okay, going down behind the bushes it's a decent firing position here it's quite a good one actually I do like this one myself okay it's ready to go we just need some targets to fire at now it's a 15 centimeter howitzer based on a panther chassis it was a design that was uh, put together by Krupp but they never put it into production now he's got a reload time of 21 seconds and I saw it saw a tree go down there so I suspect there's an enemy tank in that vicinity and we're looking for any other sign that the enemy might be about nothing yet we've got a Carnarvon action 10 off to the west now this is a tier 8 game so we are going to see higher tier opponents it's a GW Panther and a Lorraine 155-50 on this team. And the enemy team's just got a GW Panther and a Crusader SP who's already been killed. And I suspect that he died accidentally because uh, there hasn't been any firing yet. So he may have accidentally fallen in the water. Well, there was a tracer there from one of the enemy RT. Or the GW Panther, rather. Fired a round in. And he's in reload. Now he's got 30 rounds of ammunition to play with. Now he's got 28 rounds of standard HE and one round of premium. Now, an enemy tank was seen in that vicinity. A T-34 2G FT, Chinese tank destroyer. And there's the GW Panzer. So that's why we saw the tracer round out. Oh, lovely kill. Crashed. 133 hit points, pulls away straight away, looking for a new target to fire at. And T-34 2G FT is a perfect target. He's going behind that rock at the moment, but we can still, still put a round into him. We're almost loaded, and no, instead of shooting, he's going to go after that scorpion, I think. Line him up for a shot. Fires a round in, pulls back again. Uh, and Guji does this actually he pulls away so we don't see the fall of the shot it's important to know how you miss the target as much as if you hit it because uh, if you um, watch where your fall was then you can correct the mistake on the next shot but Guji does have this habit of shooting and then pulling away from where he was looking at okay fires the round in this time he didn't pull away but he got a kill shot on the T-34 2GFT not on the Scorpion It's a T-71 over there, and he's badly damaged. Oh, he's gone. Okay, SU-100M. Pulling back. Can we line up a shot? Yes, we're getting a request for fire. Rounds out. Should hit. It does. 250 hit points. Good shot. Right, it's an E-25 hiding behind that building, but it's a difficult shot from here because the building is in the way. But we're almost reloaded. Right, in the town we're seeing a couple of enemy tanks have made their way through. Lorraine 40 ton, an AMX AC-48 tank destroyer, and there's also a T-32 following them up. Now we can get shots on the AMX AC-48, but he's just killed our T-28 prototype. And we missed, and that Lorraine's in the water, he's a drowner. He's definitely going to drown, I think he was shoved in by the AMX-1357. I don't think he's going to survive. I'm pretty sure he's going to drown. The Scorpion's going in after him. Now that's a bit of an idiotic thing to do. And the Lorraine has drowned. 
or did he? No, the AMX 1357 got him. But now that Scorpion can't get back out again. Oh, and we fire around in. The Scorpion's taken out. He's killed by the AMX CDC. And now our 1357's probably going to drown as well. That's very bad news. We're almost loaded, but we're going to go for that AMX CDC. Who's going on to the peninsula. So he's probably going to catch sight of us soon. And that AMX 1357, well, he's not going to last very much longer. He's under the water and he's drowned. Don't go in the water. It's too deep. <laughs> oh, dear. Several self-inflicted casualties they were. Now, thankfully, the CDC was taken care of by our Lorraine 40 ton. And the scores are fairly even. There's one tank down. Now, he was firing at an IS-2 that was last seen in that vicinity. But we've got a Yak Panther making his way across the field. And we're not loaded at the moment. Is he going to go behind? Yes, he is. He's going around the rock. Oh, no, he stopped. Fatal error. Good, he lines up the shot. Fires the round in. And that probably landed right next door to the Yak Panther. So it would have done some damage to him. I doubt if he's still going to be there, though, when we next shoot. And there's still the problem of that AMX AC-48 who was in the town. He's still fairly close. Luckily, we've got tanks coming back to defend the cap. So if he does make a move, we'll spot him and be able to do some damage. I can hear some destruction, so that's probably a tank. And there was a red line there, so he couldn't shoot without hitting the obstruction. There's a T-32. The American Tier 8 Heavy that was used in Frontline. Uh, there's the AC-48. He's gone back up on top of the hill. And can we get a shot? Just. Only just. Now it's going to be a difficult one. He's into cover now. He probably pulled back under cover because he knew that he was already exposed. There's the IS-2. Lining up a shot. And ready to go. And dialed in. Round out. Looks good. It's a direct hit. Oh, he set fire and destroyed the SU-100. So he aimed at the IS-2, but he got the SU-100 instead. So that's three kills for Gucci 72 so far. One of them an unintended kill. <laughs> well, he did want to kill the enemy, but I don't think he wanted that one. I think he wanted the IS-2. I would not be surprised if that IS-2 was still there, by the way. I would not be surprised at all. If the shell hit the SU-100, he probably looked to his left and thought, well, uh, or to his right and said, oh, it blew up. But he wouldn't really think about why it blew up. <laughs> I've seen that happen where you fire at one tank, you hit another one that was next door to it, and the tank that you were originally firing at just sits there like a, a rabbit caught in the headlights um, and waits for your next shell. Only irregularly do um, does a tank actually move after its enemy next door or its teammate next door to him blows up because he thinks, well, it can't be me. It can't have been aiming at me. They must have been aiming at him. Well, the scores are even. Except, of course, the enemy's got three heavy tanks and we haven't. And there's the eight Carnarvon Action 10. And he's pulling back into the city because he's a splash kill. That IS-2 is the same one we fired at before. And we fire the round in and we do get some splash. 24 hit points. Almost through the reload. Now, IS-2 knows he's in an RT uh, environment now, so he knows he's in a kill zone, so he's being very cautious. Gucci pulls back. Has pointed the nose of the vehicle upwards a little, because he's on a downslope. No targets in sight at the moment. 
That may have been around from the Lorraine 15550. There's the IS-2. Fire the round in, but it's too shallow, too short. And the IS-2 goes down to the uh, the Rain 40 ton. He's had a good battle so far. He's got two kills. Now, funnily enough, I actually do favour going into the shallow water right next door to that area there because um, it's so low that it's very difficult for the enemy to actually spot you because uh, you're on the water edge. They think that you might be going in there to drown. Of course, we don't drown because we're what arty noobs. We fight to the end. But if you go into a shallow position like that, it can be terribly difficult for the enemy to spot where you are and you can still get shots on them. They can't do in return until they come really close. And of course, if they come really close, you can shotgun them. And we've got a T25 nearby and of course the Lorraine 40 ton. So we've got some tanks guarding the cap area. T-34 2GFT is up in the wooded area, just to the uh, west of the cap. And we've got our guard coming back to defend the pass. So it's basically defending the cap as much as we can at the moment. The guard's gone low, so he's actually defending around the back of the cap area. And he's still heading south. Looks like he's coming down to this area too. Now I suspect that they think there's rich pickings from these enemy tanks when they start their attack. Well, there's the T-34, a T-32. He's poked his nose out. We can splash him. And 87 hit points. Now, that's one of the things I do like to do to enemy tanks. If they decide to hide behind a building or a rock, you splash the side of them and they don't like it when they lose 100 hit points and they weren't even in sight of you. Um, that can really unnerve them. And then sometimes they'll make a stupid move by pulling out straight away after they've been hit because uh, they think, oh, well, I might as well move anyway rather than be destroyed where I am. Lorraine 40 tons moving up. He's probably got a full magazine to shoot. And he's being engaged by the T-32. And that Action 10. Oh, it's got the T-32. The Action 10's moving up the other end of the road. I think he's going to poke his head around the corner. The Rain 40 tons pulled back, but the Spicks come into sight. And he's headed behind those houses. Lining up a shot. Fires around in. Oh, it's too soon. It landed too short of the Spick. The Lorraine 40 ton, I think, is in reload. And here comes the E25. He's engaged in the T-34 2G. They can't shoot at the moment. They're just too close together. And the E25's gone down. Okay, now we can engage the Spick. That's the two-minute warning. And the Carnarvon action tank comes around from the corner. We fired at this Spick. Oh, good hit. 350. The Spick's been stunned and tracked. The action 10's gone down. And one of the enemies turned up near the cap area. Is I think is that the AC? No, it's the A yes, it is the AC. And he's headed this way. We're loaded. Lining up a shot. Oh, kill shot! 125. Ensign wins the game just after our teammate in the guard was killed. The Lorraine 40T dealt with the um, the Spick and we take out the AC to win the game. Now, let's have a look at the end of battle results. Well, it was only a second class tanker uh, and Bruiser Medal for getting at least five critical hits. He managed to get 18 in this battle and a Fighter Badge for getting at least four kills. He got four exactly, but he did get that lovely last kill lined up on the AC. And as he came around the corner, bang. And that's why I, I like being low in their position because they can't see you, but you can still lob shells at them and it makes it very effective when you take them out. So good round there from Gucci72. Let's have a look at team scores. 
Well, he got the highest damage on his team, 2,478 hit points, but it wasn't enough for the high caliber. That went to the AMX AC, who managed to get 4,239. He picked up the high caliber. When it came to kills, it was the 40 ton who managed to get the most. He managed to get five when he killed off the Spick. And then came Gucci72 with four kills. Highest scorers on the enemy team with the AMX AC and the AMX CDC with three kills apiece. When it came to base XP, it was again the Lorraine 40 ton managed 1117. Then came Gucci72 with 908. And finally, the ST Guard with 694 on his team. Highest score on the enemy team was the AC. He managed 697. So if we look at detail, he fired 17 rounds, got 6 direct hits, 6 penetration, 8 splash, damage of 2,478 hit points, of which 2,142 were at more than 300 metres. That last kill was a lot closer, actually. He damaged 9 in the enemy, killed 4 of them, and did stun assistance of 237 hit points off 10 stuns. On a premium account, he earned 37,587 credits, and after ammunition resupply, took away 18,547 credits. He received 6 1,362 XP, times 2 for the first victory of the day, took away 2,724 altogether. So, good round, Guji, and uh, some good shots at the end, and you weren't sort of like pulling back after the shot was fired. It does, does really does help, I can't say it enough, that you actually can see the fall of the shot to see what mistake you made when you fire a shot, because I do that, I, I make mistakes when I fire, and I try to correct the mistake on the next shot, but when you've pulled back all the way, you can't see why the shell missed the target. Um, so, uh, and I know it's a technique that you've done for a long, long time, and you do get good success with it, but um, it just, it can be a bit difficult to understand why the shell missed the target. Did the enemy move or jinx at the last second? Will he jinx again when he fires again? Um, it's something it might be useful, but your last shots towards the end of the battle, they were fine, they were no, no problem at all, and you did get some good kills in there as well. So, if you enjoyed this replay, please give it a like and do subscribe to our channel, and hopefully it'll be your replay that I'll be featuring in the next video.